Hello, and welcome to St. Mark Lutheran Church in Salem, Oregon. My name is Charles Manti, and I am pastor here. On behalf of the congregation, we welcome you to worship on this, the second Sunday after Pentecost. We have a special presentation this day. Our high school graduate, Sydney Doherty, will receive her quilt, specially made for her. Our prelude is Great is Thy Faithfulness, arranged by Douglas E. Wagner. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, 
whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we, we confess, confess that, that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear indifference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of the divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering hymn in Christ's call to baptize, number 575. thirsty. God has poured out living water. To a world fainting and breathless. God has stirred a mighty wind. To a world cold and dark. God has ignited the flame of the Spirit. To a world drifting and displaced. God has rooted and grounded us in the love of the Spirit's presence. Let us worship, for the Spirit has come. The Spirit has come. Alleluia.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that, overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Exodus. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. 
Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our psalm is Psalm 100. We will read it together in unison. Make, Make a, a joyful, joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come, Come into, into God's presence with a song. Know, know that, that the Lord is God, our Maker, to whom we belong. We, we are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. Good indeed is the Lord whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from age to age. Now a reading from Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, to you. O Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. 
Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belt, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a, and a father his child, and children will, raise, will rise up against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, O Christ. Christ. I'd ask the children to join me at this time. We have a, a special person here today in our congregation. She is graduating. Her name is Sydney, and... Uh, she will be going off to university this fall, and we are very happy for her. You know, lots of graduates around the world are, are uh, anxious about continuing their education. And when we go back to the gospel reading, we see that it seems as if the 12 disciples were graduating because they are being sent out into the world to do exactly what Jesus was doing. But then Jesus starts to teach them, to teach them about what to do when they go out in the world. It would seem that their education is not quite done yet. It would seem that even after graduation, we still have to learn. I've graduated several places, and you know what? I'm still learning. I am still learning about God and God's love for me every single day. And it is the same for you children. You'll be getting older, and you'll be learning more, and even after you leave school and go out into the world like these disciples, you will still continue to be learning about God's love for you to the very last of your days. So keep learning. Learn about God's love. And God will be with you. Now let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your mercy for this day. We ask, O oh Lord, for your passion, for justice, for this country, we ask for your passion for equality. We ask for a hope through your word. In Christ's name, amen. I see a common theme in our lessons today. They all connect with the concept of journey. 
The first lesson from Exodus makes the clearest connection. The early Israelites have been walking for several months since their dramatic escape from slavery in Egypt. Then from our gospel reading, Jesus went about all the cities and villages, and later he sends out the 12 disciples and tells them how to handle themselves on the road. Psalm 100 exhorts us to come into his presence and enter his gates and his courts. But today, I would like to focus my thoughts on this portion of Paul's letter to the Romans in our second reading. At first glance, this section does not seem like a travel narrative unless we take some of Paul's words metaphorically. And for some of the insights here, I want to share my appreciation with Felipe Martinez from an article in the Christian Century. Think about how you travel for a moment. When, we have to go to, when I have to go to Portland, rarely do I have an opportunity to enjoy the scenery. It's usually a quick trip up I-5. But there are other ways to get to Portland, much more scenic, and which take much more time. I could take the scenic trip through Silverton, Mount Angel, Malala, Canby, or if I went the other way, I could see Amity, Dayton, Dundee, Newburgh. Do I go those ways? No. It is part of our culture that we usually want to get from one place to, no to another as quickly as possible. In this passage from Romans 5, Paul describes not an exterior journey, but an interior one. He says, we also boast in our suffering knowing that our suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. As it is with our outer journey, so it is with our inner journey. We want to go from suffering to hope as quickly as possible. As in, we also boast in our suffering, knowing that our suffering produces endurance, and our endurance produces character, and our character produces, ah, hope. We try to slow down, but we can't. We want to skip right over suffering, endurance, character, and jump right into hope. Because it seems that's where God's love pours into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. We are like children saying, are we there yet? I, of course, want to give you hope in my messages. Why stop along the way, especially at suffering? Well, imagine it this way. Think of these places on the way to hope, that is suffering, endurance, character, as small towns that you have to travel through, and yes, stop at, in order to get at that larger city, hope. They are not the backdrop for the trip, but part of the experience. Paul seems to have traveled this road. He knows the curves and uphill climbs, and he knows the little towns along the road. He has lived in each of them, and some for short periods of time, and others for longer than he had anticipated. To make this journey a little more tangible, I want you to imagine a companion in the car that you are driving with you on this journey to hope. That companion's name is racism. For some, racism is in the front seat giving directions. These are the folks who are quite outwardly racist. But for most of us, I suspect, Racism sits quietly in the back seat. We don't consider ourselves racist, but in fact, that passenger subtly influences our driving, seductively telling us where not to look. I'm sure for many white folk in our society, we would just as soon as pull over and let that passenger out, hoping that all the heaviness around the marches and the protests and the anger and the guilt would pass and we might enjoy living in that town called Hope. But racism will not leave that way. 
In order to get to God's dream of a new society where hope abounds for all, where subtle racism no longer leads to violent racism, as in the killing of George Floyd, those of us whose color of our skin is considered white must be willing to stop and get to know the folks in these small towns called suffering, endurance, and character. Wouldn't it be nice to stay on the interstate and get, th get there without stopping? The only problem is that our passenger racism would still be in the back seat. Instead, you and I and our culture must take the slow, dizzying drive on a road with steep climbs, narrow bridges, and warning signs. The other day on my way home from work, I was listening to national public radio, and a woman named Robin DiAngelo, author of the book White Fragility, Why It's So Hard for White People to Talk About Racism, was being interviewed. The interview is about difficult, the difficulty white people are having to have just recently recognized their own complicity in America's racist system and are looking for a quick fix. D'Angelo says, it's a little bit like saying, I want to be in shape tomorrow. She says, to sustain the momentum of these protests, it must become uncomfortable for white people to continue to benefit from the racist systems. Here's a quote. We've got to start making it uncomfortable and figuring out what supports we're going to put in place to help us to continue to be uncomfortable because the forces of comfort are quite seductive. In other words, we need to stop and meet and listen to the folk in the small town called suffering. We have to get to know the people there on a first name basis. Many of our black and brown and people of color neighbors live in that town. They have suffered for centuries from overt and covert systems of racist oppression in our society. It is an uncomfortable place to be because rightfully so, many of the folk here are angry. Wouldn't you be? Gandhi has said, I have learned to use my anger for good. Without it, we would not be motivated to rise to a challenge. It is an energy that compels us to define what is just and unjust. This anger is what is motivating the protests around the world. Now, St. Paul would say that through his suffering, he grew closer to God. However, Paul is not saying that God sins suffering, nor that all suffering produces endurance and character, and must therefore be endured. Most of the people who have lived in this small town of suffering, due to racism, have lived there far too long. Paul is encouraging all of us to pick up our cross and follow the way of Christ. Why is suffering a cause for boasting? because it drives us to trust in Christ. The Greek word translated boast also means living with one's head held high. It's rooted in the word for neck. I'm immediately reminded of how racism is like a knee on the neck, causing breathlessness and death. George Floyd was prevented from boasting, from holding his head high, Instead, an officer's knee was on his neck, and he died. Our racist economic and justice system is a knee in the neck, especially for the poor, for people of color, and for this planet. The outcry that so many are making around the world should bring us to our knees. The hope to which we must attain is that we, as the white majority, must admit to our own addiction to the way things are, Confess our powerlessness to change, as the first step of the 12-step process calls us to do, and realize, though we are powerless, we are not helpless. This, in fact, could be a time for a dreadful and amazing moment of grace. That dreadful and amazing moment of grace was well articulated 
by a white Texas pastor, Steve Wells, at the funeral of George Floyd this week. He said, if I could just have the privilege, I would like to say a word to the white churches. We are better than we used to be, but we are not as good as we ought to be. That is not good enough, which means you have to talk to take up the work of racial justice. Racism did not start in our lifetimes, but racism can end in our lifetime. That is God's hope for the world. That is the city toward which we must head. I would invite uh, Sydney Dargy forward along with her mother, Julie Oslin, and her grandmother, Joyce Peters. This quilt is presented as part of St. Mark's tradition of sending its graduates into the world wrapped in the love of the congregation. Sydney selected the fabric, I pieced the top, Trudy Eisenbeis quilted it, and Donna Wolf completed it with a label. And it is our privilege and pleasure to pass this to you, Sydney. And we'll have your mother and your grandmother drape it over your shoulders. As you graduate, may Christ wrap you in the grace of God. 
In the storms of life, may, may Christ be your shelter. In the whirlwind of daily activity, may, may Christ be your security. In the onslaught of temptation, may, may Christ be your guide. In the anxiety of fear and failure, may, may Christ be your refuge and strength. In all the days of your life, may, may God, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and bring you safely home. Gracious God, we ask your blessing upon Sydney. From your store of strength, grant her the wisdom and will to make faithful choices, leading her to her true calling and joyful service. Grant her supportive friends. Give her patience in suffering, perseverance in struggle, and the protection of your holy angels, that the wicked one have no power over her. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Holy One of the Journey, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Holy One of all creation, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Holy One of justice for all, we have created, created divisions you will not own. We have harbored suspicion and fear which you call us to face. In places of conflict, especially in places of deep racial tension, raise up leaders who work to develop new equitable policies which will honor and uphold the suffering. We pray that the citizens of this country would be given the courage to remember and confront its history of racial injustice, and be given hearts to undertake the difficult journey of freedom for all. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Holy One of compassion, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick, especially Pat, Karen, Janice, Roe, Dana, Charlene, Mason, Linda, Beverly, Sunny, Vic, Chuck, Ruth, Rolf, Tim, Harry, Diane, Maureen, Bud and Jeannie and Peyton. Be with all those who have been affected by the coronavirus. Bring them health. Feed all who hunger. Empower all those, all whose voices go unheard. And help us to respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Holy One of joy. Be with Sydney and all graduating seniors. Grant them wisdom and direction in these uncertain times. Guide them and keep them safe. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. great. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us, especially George Floyd. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us to join the saints in light. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. We sing Morning Cry, number 732.
Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts, that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our community and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise, O God, for your love has been poured into our hearts through your Holy Spirit given to us. Nothing is too wonderful for you, and with a word you brought all creation to birth. You revealed yourself to our forebears, Abraham and Sarah, sharing round the table with them and promising them the fruit of their withered dreams. The fulfillment of your promises came in your child, Jesus, who revealed your compassion for the people, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing the sick and broken of all that afflicted them. In the fullness of love, he gave his life for us while we were yet lost in our sin. But you raised him from the dead, and now through our faith in him, you justify us and welcome us to the table of grace. And so, with your people here on earth and with the company of heaven, in every language and in every heart, we glorify your name, singing. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will, will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. We sing now the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away 
Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness, and you have been and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, Rise Up, O Saints of God, number 669. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be ever, ever able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Our postlude is Jubilation by Carlton Innes. Mm -hmm.